Okay, how do we get, sorry, it's a little bright here. So let's say you have all of your stripes with your pattern, but you don't like how light some of it is. Some of it you may be okay with. And know that even the, the top can be the top of your painting, or you can turn it around, it doesn't matter. But if it's all dry from the day before and you wanna add some more, you just kinda of do the same concept you did where you take a brush, and wet it. And actually what I should have shown you first was, remember we have to get the color we want. We wet it, we get more. Here's my lovely cup of water. And then where you have your water, you can add some more color that you want. It's a little hard to do one-handed. Just remember, don't take it straight from here because that's one way to waste paint. You add some more water, get some more here, and you can add more color. So if you need to do that before starting part two, by all means do so. You could see these areas where I have a lot of um, darker orange and maybe I want to have some that can be just fine I could be happy with it or maybe I want to add some more saturated orange. So I go up here I get some orange I put it over here. If but if you mix your warms and that's the color you're using, by all means, I'm just sticking with the simple one. And then I can come up here. And then you can add some more. Just make sure you add more water, just like you did before. Paint it with the water. Not the best camera. Not the best demo. There we go. That's what I was going for. Okay, so that's one way that you can touch up your stripe, your background, part one of this project. So I added some saturation to my to my stripes, so they would have been fine light. Some people like that. Um, I just wanted to add some for those of you that want a little more um, brightness going on with yours. Um, with yellow, it's you really don't go darker with yellow. You just go more bright, uh, more of a saturation. Um, I went ahead and did this as the top and this is the bottom when I started it, and I could turn it over and make this the top if I want the sky area, but you know, I'm happy going ahead and leaving it like this. So it's really up to you. Now, if you look over here, this is the sort of thing we should see. A lot of saturation of your colors, and if you have a mixture of warm colors, a saturation of that mixture going on here. These want to be wet, but you don't want to go straight into them to get the color you need. You want to pull it into here, and if you need to uh, wet something by all means go for it okay so what do we do with our next step you know keep in mind I'm only one-handed so some of this is going to be off a little bit but don't overthink how you can make your hills and stuff like one of the first things you can do is get a dark saturated color like like red and then just kind of come up and just kind of do an outline of a ground like a mountainy hill, and you can just kind of go like this. You don't have to worry about making the inside of the hill, the colors of those yet. But you want this to be mostly dry when you do this. It doesn't have to be completely dry, your stripes when you do this, but mostly, otherwise they're just going to, you know, bleed into each other. Like right now they're kind of bleeding into each other a little bit. So I'm going to pour a little more saturation in there. 
There we go. And then you can pull some going this way. Maybe I want to pull some more. So I come in here and we kind of even do that little wet on wet there just to get some more red going here. So this is a good way to start, at least to get the outline that you want. And one thing you could do is you can just add some water here so some of it just automatically comes down. Just like if you were to put water next to a spill, it's going to just keep the spill going. But another thing you can do is get a different color, a different warm color. So I'm just going to get orange. I'm just keeping them simple, but some of them will mix on their own. And then I'm coming in here, throwing this together. And sometimes they'll just, these two will mix on their own. Other times you might want to help it a little bit. If it starts to get too light, you can just go in and do a drop-in method to kind of get what you want to, to look more saturated. And then you can pull it down some more. And even if it's too light at first, just like your stripes, you can always come back in and add. The thing about watercolor is it's hard to go from light to, I mean, from dark to light but it's easy to go from light to dark. So if anything is ever too light, you can always darken it. So keep that in mind. So if it's time to stop or if you're frustrated with the way something is turning out, but it's because it's too light, you can always add it. Here's the drop-in method that we kind of looked at the other day. You can certainly do something like that. I would be able to demonstrate it better if I wasn't one-handed, like if I can get the get it to work, but I'd have to tap it with my other hand to get it to work better, so hopefully you get the idea. I can come over here and do this if I want to. It's really up to you, and you can keep going there. Real quick, I'm just going to show kind of like a cactus area. And that's a really lame one right there with being one-handed. I'll try a little bit better. If I was... If I had two hands on holding a phone, you might ask me, why isn't someone in my family holding a phone? Well, one was fighting earlier about doing homework. And the other stressed out about his homework, so I'm just not even going to punch to... Uh... So this is probably going to look like a real lame cactus, but oh well. We see some cactus out there that look a little lame anyway. So here's Mrs. H's lame cactus. Now, one way to help a cactus is to kind of make the middle a little longer. And then you can even do the drop in there to get a little more of the red going on there to make it. There we go, see? And then hopefully bring it in a little bit more. And then you can add to it. You can take a, um, a small brush not a small brush, but one of the skinnier ones that don't have as much brush action on there. And you can get some of that red and make like background cactuses or even something like this in the background. One more thing. I know I said one more thing I want to show you, but is you can even make, that's not going to do it, is you can even make kind of like mountains in the background. So they wouldn't be completely red. They would be like a, a lighter color. And then you can go back in. Let's just pretend I kept going there. And then I take that skinny brush that I showed you. I get some of that red. And I can make small cactuses in the background. Of course, one-handed, there are small lame cactuses. But there you go. I could do it better with two hands, but... Anyway, so I hope that helps with the second part, and, I, and hopefully because I uh, didn't do it as well as I wanted to, that helps you not feel too intimidated. And um, let's start part two.